Now, thanks for staying with us. Now, according to Deloitte's Women's at Work report, women now make up almost half, that's 43% of global workforce and tend to outperform men when it comes to some key performance indicators such as work-life balance and job satisfaction. And this is why we're seeing more and more women take on leadership roles as well as reinvent the ways they handle projects, um, especially when they have to work from home or any other remote location. Now, fairness aside, empowering women for top performance is an investment in a brighter future for everyone. So women are empowered. Uh, women that are empowered, um, they become agents of advancement in the society, economic growth and constructive change agents as well. Uh, we unlock a wealth of talent that drives us to towards a more just and affluent society by recognizing their potential, encouraging their confidence, and giving them fair chances. So today we're asking, how can we empower our women to become peak performers, right? Um, just do great at every level, every cater, and every, um, what's it called, um, whatever um, department or whatever it is that they find themselves, right? So please let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation, send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 0818038466 and also tweet at us at Wayshow Africa One with the hashtag Wayshow. So tell me, what would help you become the best at your job, be the top um, accountant, you know, in your field? What would help you? Um, what would support look like for you? First, um, the people that are around me, um, if they're supportive, um, morally, believing in what I'm doing, encouraging. Could also be financial, especially when you want to afford that, have the PhD and all of that. Yeah, that would definitely go a long way. But it's also that support from the home system, or maybe my partner, mm -hmm. you know, giving me that go, go on, go on. Because some, sometimes those are the things that if you're doing it alone and pushing yourself, sometimes you might be down. And if you don't have those sort of support, you get discouraged and you just want to let go. Absolutely. So, yeah. Mary, what would support look like for you? Hmm. I think I always have to be home every time. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I don't know how to explain it, but I, maybe more on emotional management. Like we spoke about like hormonal imbalance. Um, the truth is, some people do not know how to manage it when it comes, you know, and there's outbursts of emotions and you're tagged a moody person or something. Mm -hmm. But, you know, sometimes you ju might just have, it might be hormonal, which that you, you're experiencing. Um, second of all would be, I think, uh, more sensitization to men in terms of, because I'm in sales, and um, I think men can be really nasty. Mm. And it makes the experience, you know, horrific. You know, you wouldn't want to know what your top prestigious, you know, people or HNIs are, you know, how they act. You know, it's very disappointing, you know, because it's not even the young ones, you know, it's the old one. So um, I, I, don't, I don't know what can be done in terms of because a lot of females who are into sales and are on the field out there experience all sorts, mm. you know, and I think That's it's interesting. very demoralizing very experience. Very, very interesting. Wow. Yeah. Let me bring in our guest. Abiola Salami is a world-class performance strategist committed to raising world-class leaders and improving the productive capacity and brand perception of organizations and governments. Now, he's an alumnus of Harvard um, University, Lagos Business School, and American Government International Visitor Leadership Program. Now, he is committed to uh, workforce productivity for youth and women empowerment, as well as leadership development led um, led him rather in, to publish books, audio, visual content, as well as designing and implementing capacity um, development programs towards achieving relevant sustainable development goals. Now, other awards include Africa Most Influential Coaching Leadership um, Leaders by the Dual of Africa Leadership Awards and World HRD Con Congress and Global Coaching Champions 2021. 
by World Coaching Congress. And he's a friend of the house, right? And he's joined us live in studio. He's, uh, he's many things. Because I saw you nodding. Thank you so much, Abiola. Dr. Abiola Champs. Let me, let me add the doctor, please, with respect. Thank you. Thank you for having Abiola me. Salami. Good evening. It's great to be here. Honestly. And, I, and I'm loving the set. I thank you say. so much. Thank you so much. It's been a while. But hey, we're happy to have you. I mean, I saw you nodding your head when um, Mary was talking about, um, uh, what's it called, emotional balance. And I know that you are the king of emotional intelligence, right? You know, <laughs> every time you always talk about it. Um, but really, today we want to discuss something really powerful because I believe that, um, like the research rightly said, women are not just, um, how do I put it? So even in the midst of all our emotions, there lies in our power. If you empower one woman, literally she can change a whole, she can change a whole community. Just feeling that, po that power within her, she can make a lot of things happen for the for the society and make it a lot better right i mean you are someone that advocates you know that people perform at their peak when it comes to productivity and all of that so what would that mean if you look at it based on your years of experience and all of that working with different organizations and government and all of that if we say we truly want to empower women to become a peak performer what would that mean? What would, what would be your indicators for yeah. that? Okay, great, great question. And once again, thank you for having me this evening. And I'm loving all I'm hearing from the ladies before I came into the studio, <laughs> even while in the studio. Um, so what would it mean to empower a woman to be a peak performer? I think the beginning of it is for us to know that a peak performing woman is a catalyst for socioeconomic development. Mm. The beginning of that thought will now let us to start to ask questions that if this is the goal we want to achieve, you know, uh, to, to, to grow our economy, um, to take um, the community out of poverty, to reduce crime rates, right? That's the goal. So what are the things we need to do to engage our, our, our women? Um, the place of support is incredible, is really great, you know, uh, whether it's from, the, it's from the family, you know, from the partner, um, from colleagues, colleagues yeah. you know, organizations is, themselves. Yeah, organizations themselves. That place is really great. And in addition to that, um, women also, um, to some extent, uh, need to start to also take personal responsibility for their growth. The conversation about um, um, the Sustainable Development Goal, Goal 5, um, um, about gender equality, uh, that inclusion conversation has a, if we really want to achieve that, uh, there are two basic things that we should do. One is help women where they can't help themselves. You know, um, run, have an advocacy uh, program for women, uh, put some projects in place to help women where they can't help themselves. And the other part is empower women you know, to help themselves. It's the place of coaching, the place of training, and the place of understanding that, yes, I have a potential, but my potential is to be great. My potential is to um, be um, a, a super, super chartered accountant, you know, is to be a super salesperson, you know, for example, is to be the number one lawyer uh, in the country. So while my technical skills will require, uh, where I need to be proficient technically, I also need to know that there are other skills beyond the technical skills, Soft skills. Yes, that I need to, to acquire. And for me, it begins with the individual. You know, uh, in, in my work with, with, um, with women, uh, I have I've observed some, some self-limiting beliefs you know, mm -hmm. that could actually um, prevent a woman from becoming that kind of woman she hopes and dreams to be. I mean, she can see it in her mind's eye that this is who she wants to be. She has heard, she has listened to stories, she has probably read books, she's been inspired by other people, and she wants to move from where, she's, where she is right now. And there's a place she's seen herself to be uh, on the top of the food chain, you know, in her career, um, to be the very best in her business if she's an entrepreneur. But there are some self-limiting beliefs that could cripple that. Mm. Number one on the list is when a woman thinks that she's too old or too young to attempt something great. Mm. You know, when she thinks she's too old, too young. So that's about age. 
and when, when you think you and, and the truth is no matter your age you actually neither too young nor too old you know to attempt greatness yes i understand that based on age there are some physiological um, things that you may not be able to change. I mean, when you were 20, you know how you looked. In your 30s, you know how you look. In your 50s, you know how you look. You may not be able to change to something. Change that, although you can. But you may not be able to change that. <laughs> with, <laughs> with technology. Yeah, with technology, you can change it. But you may not be able to change the, the physiology. You're right. Um, but in terms of capacity, in terms of your drive to attempt things, in, in terms of Knowing that even when you fail, you have learned something, mm. and that you are not overthinking failure, you know that. Mm. But you, you dare to attempt it. You, you you try, you know. Last last, you've learned something, Abby. you know. So some of the self-limiting beliefs are, are real. You know, I talked about the one, you know, the one about age. There's also the one about capacity. You know, when you think you are not smart enough. Mm. There's also the other side where you think you are too smart. Mm. Mm. You know, where you think you are too smart for that. You know, some people, some women think they are too smart because they've consumed a lot of um, motivation from those that from you, say that from you, you people now aspire to spark fire. I'm not in that industry. <laughs> you know, because they've consumed a lot of motivation. You know, to aspire to pe to desire uh, require your, your Maguire so that it will not expire until your refire. You know. and, and and so so motivational quotes and thoughts that is not founded on reality and is not founded on character development you know that yes it inspires you 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 are excited about it and then it disappears when you face reality you know so so some of these self-limiting beliefs are the things that more women need to pay attention to and remember self-limiting beliefs so it's actually not what another person is doing to me is what I'm doing to myself that I am not aware of. You know, learning takes place in four stages. Uh, there is the unconscious incompetence, which is uh, I'm not aware that I don't know. Uh, there is the conscious incompetence, which is oh, now I know that I don't that know. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Now that unconscious incompetence, when a woman doesn't is not even aware that the reason I am not getting ahead the way I would love to. Is because of something in me mm -hmm. that is holding me back. I mean, for example, some lady would like to, she has a potential to be a fantastic, amazing presenter. That if she stands in front of 500 people, 1,000 people, 5,000 people, she will blow them away. I mean, everybody will be applauding her. That is what she can do. But where she is right now, she has stage fright. You know, she can't, she can have a great conversation amongst her friends. Mm. But the moment you say, okay, can you stand, stand in front, front and tell us the same thing you just shared with us, uh, she will get there, start shaking, start shivering. You know, she can't put her words you know, to, together to make, um, um, a, to make sense out of it. Now, while that fear is real, it is important that you get into training, into coaching, into studying, into learning. And that learning doesn't necessarily have to happen within the four walls of a classroom. Um, it can even be just a book that you are reading. And by the way, you can just keep trying it till you get it right. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are some of us... In fact, these days, there are just so many things available. Mm -hmm. I mean, you go on YouTube, you go on different platforms. There are educational materials that, you know, it is at your beck and call. I think what you said that is really, you know, very key is is the, is the belief that you have inflicted, that, like, you know, is... is um, self-inflicted mm. the the limitations are mm. self-inflicted but you know what let's quickly go run off on a very short break i know ladies have questions we'll come back from the break stay with us why is the expression not working <clears throat> no, don't start again Now, if you just tuned in, we're discussing empowering women, you know, for peak performance. And we have with us Dr. Abiola Salami. Now, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 0818038463. You can also tweet at us at WayshowAfrica1 for the hashtag Wayshow. Glory, let me come to you. Okay. Um, I'd like to ask, what advice will you give to women that are in environment that are not, uh, that are not encouraging? I'll give an example. So... While um, after my university, 
um, I was advised, so I was approached by this potential suitor who was interested in setting down with me. And one of the things like, um, um, during the course of our conversation, he said is, um, I want you to, hope you know when we eventually get married, I want you to drop this, because I wear heels a lot. Yeah, okay. Don't wear heels, wear these four corner shoes. So he was just painting a picture of, oh, I want you to be this homely, have kids, oh, okay. take care of my kids, something dressed this way, because this is how, this is his idea of how he wants his woman to be. So that was not resonating with me, because I know where I wanted to be. And I knew that if I'd made that decision of going down that path, that would be the end of me in mm. terms of what I would want to achieve. Mm. So I'm imagining women that are in sort of, those sort of marriages, relationship, what, and they have dreams, they want to be the best of themselves. What sort of advice would you give them? Mm. So the advice, it would have been great, it came early before the marriage. <laughs> <I feel. laughs> before the husband should come with AK-47, yeah, so they will because, come and look for you. Because they are ready. It. And when you said that the guy didn't want you to wear high heels, I was wondering, is he short? And then so he's thinking. <laughs> no, no, not exactly high heels. There's this four corner shoes. No, the block heels. He wants the block heels. No, but he's trying to protect your knees from arthritis, actually. You know. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, so, so it, it's important for us to know that or rather not just you know for us to appreciate that every individual they have their expectation of how they want their future to be male or female um, and that has nothing to do with who they are with or who they want to be with first as an individual they have expectations of how they will want their future to be that also includes whoever they will want to be married to male or female that's even before the person shows up you know we all have some a ideas, picture that you a painted picture, in your mind you know oh he should be like this or she should be like this he should do this now the challenge is when people now get into relationships we don't immediately start to think about those things that we have in our minds the expectations we have of how the person should be what the person should do or what the person shouldn't do Maybe there are one or two things that swept us off our feet when we, you know, met this lady or met this guy. Now, I'm talking in both, both ways now. When we met this lady or when we met this guy and it made us to forget all of those other things. And then we also did not have conversations that, okay, let me even get to know this person more. You know, will this person actually uh, like it if I do things this way? or the other way but we don't necessarily pay attention to that especially um, and now i'm coming for the lady now when the lady is getting you know older around here and then there's pressure there's prayer <laughs> you know and then there's pressure which is unnecessary but unfortunately it happens it exists you know and there's pressure from parents uh, from from friends, you know, there are friends that will make some side remarks that what they are trying to say is that yeah we were classmates but now we are no more mates, mm. you know. Uh, so so all of that, um, so it's easy for the lady to just forget about those other things. As I say, see, I beg now, nah, I'm Kukuma getting married. So but if you are ready in it, what should you do? Again, I wish we had this conversation <laughs> before you got into it. Um, what you can do is to know that. Every one of us, we have people that can influence us. So part of what you can do as a lady, if you're in that, is what are the people that can influence your spouse? Um, to know that you don't mean harm. In fact, what you are thinking of is what will help the family, you know, to be, um, to improve your standard of living, what will help the family, you know, to continue to grow. So who are the people that can influence this man that you have found yourself with who's perhaps not listening to your perspective about things, and then that can be a way to get him to, to really listen. Um, in as much as we all behave like we are strong and we are, we are, uh, we are, we are adamant, you know, with whatever opinion that we have, there are people that can influence us, uh, people who have what I call our mood button, you know, mm -hmm. who will get us to listen to them. So that's one way to, you know, to look at that. I wouldn't even think you should also, you know, before <clears throat> you even get to that stage, what I would also say is, you know, I think he had mentioned it before, there are tools available to upgrade yourself so that by the time you are having that conversation, you are already ready for whatever growth that mm -hmm. the next level would be for you. 
pending let's say let's agree assume that the person that had this mumu button is able to press it well you know uh, but i just go i wanted to now go back to the business world so i was in a com in a, not in a conference in a small community of women ceos amazing women you know i met very beautiful women with businesses that are doing well but you know with good turnovers and all of that and again when it was time for you to sit down or stand in front of um the ventures venture capitalists you know to pitch your ideas and say okay this is how much i want women were afraid mm. to you know a man can actually walk in with all boldness and say you know what i need 10 billion dollars for my business but you see when it comes to women we're a bit laid back when it comes to demands like so for instance i have an idea to build a world-class company you know with this with that and all of that you know not not many women are bold enough to go out to say you know what i want to demand you know they're afraid so what brings that fear because again i believe that if we start to have more top female ceos what mary had complained subtly about which is you know you know harassment and all of that you hardly find those things anymore because now women are at the top level and all of that so how do we get women to start to become a lot more courageous when it comes to their businesses and more daring okay great question uh my first comment is we give men too much credit really we give men a lot of credit you guys you just yeah. and the funny thing the man don't know anything no. <laughs> You will go there and you collect the money. Yeah. So, so we give men a lot of credit. But the, While there are uh, men who are courageous to engage, um, there are a lot of timid and, men. And this is from my work, right? There are loads of men uh, who won't even show up at all because they won't come for that program mm. at all because um, of timidity, right? So what can women start to do? Um, it's to one understand that courage is not the absence of fear, mm. but the willingness to persist even while you are feeling the Afraid, fear. Yeah. Um, most people who appear courageous were did not receive an injection called courage <laughs> before they left the house. And either did they take a pill that is called courage. In fact, I've been in the presentation before that the gentleman was doing it I was shaking while doing it. <laughs> and he said, I know I'm shaking, but, <laughs> but, <laughs> I still do but it. I'm still doing it. You know, yeah. and, and because of that, the people he was preaching to, you know, were quite compassionate that for your courage, for showing up. So what women should continue to do is show, show up. up. Show up. Um, was it a bad presentation? Well, you've learned Not one thing me. you shouldn't do the next time. But growth does not happen while you are just sleeping. Yes, physical growth could happen while you are sleeping, but growth in skill doesn't happen while you are sleeping, doesn't happen while you are just um, behind the scenes if you need to be in front. It happens with you being on set. Yes, you are on set. You did the first time. Yeah. It did not work. I remember you saw that saying about thinking. Is not this yeah, you know. <laughs> so you did the first one. It did not turn out well. Uh, rather than overthinking it and not attempting again, just okay, what have I learned from this thing? This one, ah, but it was bad. People made fun of me. Ah, oh, no. Yes, that's a reality. All that came with your first attempt. But when you attempt again and you do it again and again and again, you continue to improve. They say practice makes perfect. perfection. So it's that courage to even step out. That courage that you're afraid. Will they throw tomatoes at me? You know, will they make fun of me? How will it go is to begin to start, I mean, to step out. Now, while you are stepping out, it's not just that, uh, well, I listened to Dr. Abiola Salami on ways. He said I should step out, so tomorrow is Saturday. Let me just go out there. No. Before you go out there, plan, plan how, your pre how you want your presentation to go. Now, you plan, and then also imagine how you want the presentation to go. I mean, for me, coming on this show today, oh, ways, oh, yes, oh, oh and I'll meet the ladies, okay. Um, I'll have fun. Um, yes, this is the topic we are discussing. I don't necessarily know how exactly it will pan out, but, we'll, but we'll, we'll, we'll have a great time while we get there. Mm -hmm. Because some people actually fail before they get on set. Mm -hmm. right? So when you have condemned yourself before you show up where you have told yourself, oh, I cannot do this thing. I'm bad at this. Oh, the last time was terrible. I don't know how this one will be. With that worry, you cripple yourself 
and then you are unable to perform when you get to the stage. So these are a few things. And you attract you what is on your inside. Maybe yeah. let me come yeah. to you. Okay, um, so I'm going to point, come from the point of view or um, you spoke about beliefs and limiting beliefs and there are certain conditioning, you know, that women go through, you know, from a young age and which is the whole marriage stigma. So um, I've seen people who want to do better, but... At the same time, there's also not that much transparency from women who have made it there. No, oh, okay. You know, so there's there's that um, mindset of maybe I should just get married and then get married to a rich man. You know, it now seems like that's an escape because you're not able to actually believe in yourself, you know, to achieve such sustainable heights you know and probably over time you know you've just been assisted you've been assisted by by men you know rather by father figure is still fine you know or you you've had relationships at certain points there has been a bit of cushion which is not a bad thing but how do we get past the conditioning you know because I know that a lot of young people right now see marriage as an escape. It's like, okay, I'm not really doing so well. Mm, that's us. I just marry rich yeah, man. Do you understand? And, and you're, there's, there's pressure from society as well to say, oh, you know, ah, Mario, you know, it's almost like there's going to be, if at least you don't achieve anything. And yeah, yeah. yeah, like you're a married woman. <laughs> it's a bit of an accomplishment, you know. Mm. So it's, it's such a... Uh, um, mind conditioning that I think has really limited a lot of women. Not that they don't have the potential, but it's like you can't even think that big. I'm 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 really happy for um, how things are now, like with um, the use of internet, YouTube, and even the whole influencing that seems very cliche, you know, when you say it. But it has taken. Um, what women call fun you know like you see a, a food blogger you know she's able to make something out of what was mundane before and when they're transparent enough to tell you oh this is how much i'm making it it encourages you know people to say oh okay if she can make that much from this you know so it's possible i was hearing about the rate cards from this um, lady kiki the I think she's a Canadian stroke, mm -hmm. and I was I was charging two million, and literally I sat there and I told myself I was like wow, I know I've said it jokingly oh I want to be an influencer and it sounds like a joke like is that what you want to do with your life you want to be an influencer like it sounds very cliche but hearing that and you know seeing a female, I mean if you're earning two million per you know post or whatever it means you're going to be able to at some point. Purchase a house for yourself, you know, do certain things that we're seen as it's it has only, to be a man, yes. But I, I even want to add a bit to what Mary is saying because it's, it's very important. I know a lot of business women, me, I'll talk from the business, yeah. And yeah. A lot of business women that are married to billionaires, so they have everything, but you can't see any growth because why? Somewhere at the back of their mind, they just believe that. And when it's salary time, there's a billionaire somewhere. When it's this, there's a billionaire. So they do not really push to milk the potential that the business can grow to. Do you understand? So what she's saying is, is even is deeper. So how do we really, you know, that mindset? Okay. <laughs> Great. It's a lot to unpack. Yes, yeah, so. But we'll do it. And so. we have five minutes. A bit, three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> We're having fun that time has left us. It's okay. So, um, it's important that each person, each woman, mm. knows what is important to them. Not what is important to us, that is great, but what is important to me. Mm -hmm. Now, when I know what is important to me, and I see you ahead of me in that line, you can inspire me. Especially when I truly know how the steps that you've taken to get there 
not just all these motivational expressions mm -hmm. all, all around. I started with an egg, now I have um, a poultry. Chicken. No, no, no. <laughs> not, not those things, no. that I really truly know the steps that, that led you there. Because I think that a woman that decides that, you know what, I'm done with corporate. Let me just marry a rich man and calm down. If that is what she chooses to do, not because of pressure, not because she has no other choice, it's just she said that, you know what, this is what I want to do now. Fine and good. Now, if the reason she's doing it is because she thinks there's no future, there's nothing else she can do, then we can have a conversation. Right? So, and even for those that, yes, they are married, they run a business, and then they, as far as they are concerned, there's a billionaire somewhere that is doing that. If that is what they are comfortable with as well. No, we need to. But, but for the woman that is with the billionaire, Hmm. that knows that she wants to do more but she knows that it's this money that is keeping her from doing more then we can have a conversation so for that woman what's the first thing you should do the first thing you should do is don't even ask again for money give yourself say nine months a target give yourself a target of nine months saying that oh that billionaire I still love you. There's nothing wrong with us. It's just that for now, I think I have the potential to grow this business a little bit more. Now, for, for nine months to 12 months, you know, um, have, set a target for yourself. Multiply whatever it is that you have earned in the previous year by 10 and say that this is what you want to deliver. Recruit the right people that will help you to deliver this. Train them so that they have the capacity to deliver this. Yes, if you need help, ask but make sure that help is not that you are going back to how you used to run your business, mm. um, getting handouts, you know, from, from this guy. Now, when you do that, you would see how much potential that your business has. And then the following year, you can even add another zero to it, multiply by another 10 and another 10 and another 10. Because when we're having these conversations, there are people that are comfortable with just with, baby girl lifestyle. Yeah, yeah, with where they are. And, and, and if, you, if you ask me, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, choice. That is your yes, choice. If that's that your, goal. your goal. But if you know that that is not your goal, that's just a stopgap, that mm -hmm. there's a fire burning inside of you, that you're supposed to be more than this, these are things that you can do. Hmm. Absolutely. I love it. You have one <laughs> final question? Because we are not. Okay. Um, Quickly. So you have a book. Um, I was going through your profile. You have a book called. Um, um, the title of the book is. Something about um, not being, it's not a man's world, they're about. Oh, okay. So, okay. so I, can you just let us know? So I think it's something related to women okay. empowerment. So can yeah. you just. Make... So, uh, who says the man's world? Who says it's a yeah, man's world? Yeah, that's the title of the book. Type. There's another one um, coming out in two weeks. Um, it's called The Peak Performing Woman's Companion. Oh. Right. Which is some of the thoughts that I'm sharing that we've been talking about. We have that, that in the book. Uh, that book was challenging that thinking. Um, that has crippled the potential of many women that, oh, ah, it's a man's world. I mean, there's a high chance that you've probably said it to someone mm. or someone has said it to you. Mm. Or, that you know, believe. or that you believe. Thank you very much. <laughs> you deserve a bottle of cold <laughs> something. You know, or that, or that you believe it. Mm. Challenging it. Because the truth is, it is actually our world. Every one of us. There are women that are doing amazing things. And I'm talking about women that can truly share their stories. Mm -hmm. They'll tell you their that, journey. Uh, yeah, that can tell you their journey. Women that, it, it's in the public space, how they move from point A to point B. And even based on where they are now, you see that as they've grown over the years, delivering massive results, you see the humility that is following them the way that they're delivering it. You know, yes, I know there are people that don't have anything, but they're arrogant. You know, I don't know how to explain that one, you know, but there are some that have a little, uh, they're arrogant, but you see some women at the top of the chain. I know a number of them, right? At the top of the chain, the humility follows it, right? So this, these women are there. They've shattered, over shattered, mega, super shattered the glass ceiling, you know, that, that we talk about. In fact, they were not asking for anybody to give them seat at the table, at the mm. table. They just clear road. Carry their table <laughs> and dropped it there yeah. and sat there and said, Hey, which one of you wants to sit on my table? Are you qualified? You know, there, there are women like that because it's important for women, especially young and middle aged women, not to, not to allow that phrase, that thing to sink into their minds. 
when it sinks into your mind, it will start to grow roots, it will disempower you to think, to dream, and achieve greatness. Wow. That's why the book was written. Wow, wow, wow. On that note, thank you so much, Dr. Abdiola Champ. We are going to become peak performing women by the grace of God. <laughs> Thank you so much. We had a fantastic time. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Glory. Now, before we go, ensure you follow us across. Okay, Dr. Salani actually has free tickets to give to how many women now? Ten women. Ten women. And I think we'll start with the three women on this show. Abio. Yeah. So he has free tickets to give to ten women. There's an event for peak performer, uh, peak performing women, right? If you're interested, just send us a WhatsApp. If you have a woman that you think should be celebrated, send us a WhatsApp. We'll send um, the tickets across. Um, it's on the 23rd of June, right? It's on the 23rd awesome. of June. That was a summit in the oh, okay. morning. We, they come, we will send you all the details. We will send you all the details. But well, thank you so right. much, so much. Now, before you, we go, ensure you follow us across all our social media handles at Show Africa one with the hashtag Show, right? Send us, follow us across everywhere. Like, share, invite your families and friends to watch and follow. Now, if you missed our quote for today, here it is again. It says, women don't need to find a voice. They have a voice and they need to feel empowered to use it. And people need to be encouraged to listen. And I think that's what um, Abiola Champ is all about with the peak performing woman, right? You need to just express yourself. We'll see you guys on Monday as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy. <laughs>